and that's just in the United States. This symbol is used all over the world. It's used in Africa, Asia, Europe, all over the world. This symbol is used as a symbol of medicine and healing. Isn't it interesting how many things in our world come from the Word of God? They come from the Word of God. In fact, every time you see an ambulance, 100% of the time, it has like a blue symbol that's like a six lines or three lines that make a little star and they have a serpent on a pole in the middle. Every ambulance has a picture of a serpent on a pole. Isn't it amazing how there are just things that bear witness to Christ everywhere you look? You know, Christ left his stamp on this world. I mean, it's everywhere. That little pictures of the gospel everywhere. And so many things in our world, so many expressions that we use and symbols that are out there, they come from the Word of God. But let me ask you this. Out of all those medical uh, organizations that I read, I wonder if they give God the glory. I wonder if they give Jesus Christ the glory. And I wonder if they acknowledge, hey, that symbol comes from the Word of God. That's a picture of Jesus. You know, he's the great physician. You think that they give them the glory down at Yale and Stanford and, and all these other, they actually don't. So if you actually look up, where does that symbol come from? You know what they'll tell you? Oh, well, that's the rod of Asclepius. And Asclepius is a Greek god. And they say that's, you know, that's actually the rod of Asclepius and it's a Greek god. And from about 300 BC onwards, the cult of Asclepius grew very popular and Pilgrims flocked to his healing temples to be cured of their ills. So uh, the world will tell you, hey, this is a this is a Greek God, you know, the serpent on a pole. And uh, if you listen to different uh, lectures on this, they'll tell you, hey, it goes back to the sixth century B.C. And it got really popular around 300 B.C. and onward. But wait a minute, folks, when was the book of Numbers written? The book of Numbers was written around 1500 B.C. The book of Numbers that we're reading right now was written around 1500 B.C. That's around the time that Moses... You'll hear sometimes people tell you, oh, the, the Bible was written over the course of 1600 years. It's because they're going from, you know, 1500 B.C. to around 100 A.D. as far as the New Testament being finished by 100 A.D. So that's where that 1600 figure comes from. So it's easy to remember that the books of Moses were written around 1500 B.C. And look, even Christ-rejecting scholars who believe that the Bible is not telling the truth and that it's just a book of fairy tales or myths, even they will tell you that the Law of Moses was written by 1000 B.C. at the latest. 1000 B.C. is what they'll state. But we know from the chronology of the Word of God, it was actually written about 1500 B.C., it's written around 1,500 years before Christ. But even if you took their Christ-rejecting date, that's long before Asclepius, yeah. right? Which is from like the 6th century B.C. So look, this came 900 years earlier, folks. Now stop and think about this. If the Word of God tells us about this serpent on a pole that was lifted up by Moses and people would look and live. And Jesus Christ came along and said, you know what? Just like that serpent was lifted up, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. What happened after that? What did they do? What did the children of Israel do? They burned incense to it. So they did what? They worshiped it, right? So doesn't it make sense that if the children of Israel spent hundreds of years worshiping a brazen serpent on a pole. They did that for hundreds of years, starting in 1500 BC. In 1400 BC, they're still doing it. 1300, 1200, 1100, 1000 BC, still doing it, right? Still worshiping the serpent on a pole around the time of King David, right? Around, you know, 1000 BC, 900 BC, 800 BC, 700 BC. Well, look, doesn't it make sense that some of their neighbors in the Mediterranean would have picked up on this, this cult? of worshiping the brazen serpent. So obviously the Greeks picked up on this because they saw some Israeli dude worshiping the serpent on a pole or talking about it. And the next thing you know, the Greeks have their own false religion. Why? Because the devil's false religions are spinoffs of the true religion. Think about the false religions of our world. They are spinoffs from what the Lord has given us. That's why all the false religions of the world, they have a flood story. 
You know, the Hindus, they have their flood story. Why? Because of the fact that there, there was a real biblical flood, Noah and his family were saved, and the devil takes the truth and perverts it. He takes the truth and perverts it. He takes the word of God and perverts it. So this brazen serpent that was supposed to be lifted up one time as a picture of Jesus, the devil wanted to pervert that. So he got the children of Israel to keep burning incense to that, worshiping that. Next thing you know, the Greeks pick up on that. And by the time you get to 600, 500 BC, 300 BC, now the Greeks have got their own cult where they're worshiping a serpent on a pole and saying, oh man, this thing can heal you, right? But where did it really come from? So that symbol, they can try to tell you, oh, that's of this Greek God and whatever. But you know what? That symbol is actually supposed to represent the Bible story. Amen. The Bible story, right? And so Hezekiah, he eradicated it from Israel, but the Greeks picked up on it and worshiped it. Because remember, the Greeks have all kinds of false gods. You know, they're worshiping all kinds of just fake, mythical, pagan gods. So what happened was there's a guy named Hippocrates, okay? And Hippocrates is known as the father of modern medicine. Who's heard of the Hippocratic Oath before? So when doctors become a doctor, they still take this thing called the Hippocratic Oath because Hippocrates is the father of modern medicine. Well, Hippocrates, he was into this Asclepius thing. He was into some of this cult with the serpent on a pole. And so that's how that symbol made it into the medical industry. That's why all your medical industry has that serpent on a pole. So they have it for the wrong reason. But you know what? It is actually a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, you could actually use this as a witnessing opportunity because you could actually point to an ambulance, to your buddy at work, or to your relatives, or to your friends or family, and you could point to an ambulance or point to an EMT's jacket or something and say, hey, do you know what? That symbol means that serpent on a pole. And I'll bet you they probably won't even know. And you could tell them that Bible story. Don't tell them about that stupid Greek God and Asclepius and Hippocrates. Leave that junk out, right? Hey, I would just point to that serpent on a pole and say, you know where that symbol comes from? That's a Bible story. And then you could begin to tell them this Bible story. And you know what? It's a pretty cool story. You know, the fiery serpents come in and then Moses prays for the people and they end up making this brazen serpent on a pole and lifting it up. And then you could quote them that verse. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And you know what you've just done? You've just rolled into the gospel right there. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And then you can explain how that serpent pictures Jesus, because Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And we can give God the glory. And, you know, these are things that we could use. And even if the devil uses these things for evil and wants to burn incense to it, you know, God can use these things for good. Amen. You know, just like the, the, the In-N-Out Burger cup on the bottom, John 3, 16. Boom. That's a chance to share the gospel with somebody. Hey, have you ever seen that? And then that leads into the gospel. You could show them that EMT picture. You could show them that badge on a, on a paramedic. It, that symbol's everywhere, folks. You'll, now that I've mentioned it, you'll start seeing it everywhere. You know, on hospitals and medical clinics. You see it everywhere. You know, use that to preach the gospel. Amen? Amen.